we're gonna do a tactica for the Dominion squads. They're a fast attack unit for the Sisters of Battle Codex, and um, you know, in in fifth uh, edition and some of the old codices, uh, fast attack was synonymous with nothing to see here, folks. Please move along quickly. And and that was really true fifth edition. If that's what you're used to playing, um, one third of your games were kill point games, and fast attacks were a liability. Now. Um, one six of your games, they're going to be scoring units, and they are worth a victory point when they die. But, uh, but in scourging, they're worth uh, they're worth their their points because they're scoring units. Um, so, so let's talk about the Dominion squad. Uh, it's a seventy point squad. It's actually really cheap for a Sisters of Battle unit. It comes base uh, four girls and one superior. They're infantry. Um, they're they're your standard battle sister layout. These girls all have power armor, um, bolt guns, frag and crack grenades, and bolt pistols. So no difference between them and the battle sisters. They have uh, acts of faith, of course. Their act of faith is a holy fuselage, which makes them twin-linked on the, um, the round when they get their act of faith off. They have the scout special rule, uh, and they have shield of faith, which gives them that six plus invulnerable save. The scout special rule is the rule that helps them really do their job because these girls with scout can either sit at the beginning of the game in something like an emulator um, and then move and shoot or scout gives you the outflank special rule and outflank means they're going to come in on the board edge and that almost always means that they're going to be able to line break um, and often end up behind your opponents. So I'll talk about that in a second. So depending on how it gets deployed uh, early in the game, you know, before round one, if you're going to scout them in, you want to think, uh, I don't want them to die right away. I don't want to. I don't want to give up first blood with the dominions. So placing either the the vehicle they're in or placing the squad is really critical. Because you have scout though. Um, you can put them in a really obvious, stupidly open position where your opponent has free fire at them at the beginning of the game. You know, stick them if, uh, this jar here is a building, you know, and your opponent is, is in the, coming from the camera, you know, stick the Dominion Squad out right in front of it. Make them an obvious, blatant target that your opponent can shoot on round one. And then uh, he's going to deploy, he or she will deploy in such a way potentially to wipe them out, get first blood. And because you have scout, you can, if you, if you pre-measure, and you can, you could scout them back behind the building. And, you know, that way you, uh, you just denied the ability to first blood them. And should, uh, should you then seize the initiative, move them back out, and shoot, or, if you have the initiative, there's only a 1 in 6 chance that your opponent's going to seize it. You can have them behind that building there and then scout them out on round 1, or if they're in an emulator, the emulator is far more effective at this. You just drive that emulator out um, on its scout move and shoot that twin-linked multi-melta and, and probably blow something up. But, you know, the use of scout's really critical because it, it really changes the way people deploy when they look at a unit standing out in the open. And that unit, they know that unit's a suicide unit that's going to try to kill them. They kind of forget that that unit is a suicide unit that can move before the game starts. So, um, it, you know, it's not where it appears to be. And, and if you're going to scout them, that's probably the best use for them, is to put them somewhere and then move them to really change where, where they're shooting from. But uh, let's talk about what other rules they have. They have dedicated transport. They can take a rhino or an emulator. My personal preference with these girls is to put them in an emulator. Give that emulator twin-linked multi-meltas and then outflank it because uh, the dedicated transport rule says that if the unit has scout and outflank, then the vehicle does. So these girls can outflank an emulator with twin-linked multi-meltas. That's pretty good. It's it can blow up anything uh, at, at least at least within 12 inches. They cannot shoot out of it though. That's important. So. Uh, 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 in a rhino, they could move and shoot out of the uh, the firing ports on the rhino, but only two of them could anyways. Okay, additional rules. You can take five dominions uh, beyond the initial 
for 13 points a model. Uh, personally, I'm not sure it's worth it. I, you, you, unless you filled up your fast attack slots, might as well take two units. Um, for every five dominions, two of them can have special weapons. They could get storm bolters for three points. EGADs never do this. Uh, storm bolters an assault weapon. They would all have to have assault weapons to be able to shoot and assault. It shoots 24 inches, but you know, you, you're outflanking and or scouting, so you ought to be close enough to shoot. Um, they could get flamers, and you know, that's actually a decent option because of the outflank or the scout. You could be right up on your opponent uh, at the beginning. When it's twin link, those would reroll to wound. Um, they're not heavy flamers, so, uh, so you know, eh, it, it, it's a hit or miss on that. Um, my personal preference is to give them melta guns, and, uh, you know, if you gave these two girls, they're modeled with uh, flamers right here, but if you gave them melta guns, uh, when they outflank in behind enemy lines, which is what outflank usually lets you do, uh, they're going to blow up anything. You know, a melta gun it, it, within six inches blows up uh, even armor 14, so uh, they're also pretty good at, uh, at, at killing monstrous creatures, walkers, things like that. They uh, could get the Simaculum Imperialis for 20 points. I don't think it's worth it. It's a lot of points for a rerolls on your acts of faith. Um, and then the Sister Superior here, she can replace her bolt gun with a chain sword for free. There's a reason you ch change it out for free. That's because you would never do it. Um, she could change it out for a storm bolter. I've already said why I wouldn't do that for three points. She could get the, a power weapon, um, and that could be useful, but I, I'm not sure I would. She could get the combi flamer, combi malta, or plasma. And um, because this unit is likely to be assaulted, you know, getting the combi flamer might actually be useful because it would let you a wall of death, and that might deter your opponent. Uh, you never know. Um, uh, the combi melda might be okay. I'm not. I'm not sure I would take the combi plasma. Um, and the other option she could get would be the condemner bolt gun or the plasma pistol. And um, the reason I wouldn't take the combi plasma is she could take a plasma pistol and gets more than one shot with it. And yeah, plasma's got a good chance of exploding sometime, getting hot and killing you. But uh, this unit is probably going to die anyways. So take the uh, AP2 plasma pistol. Um, and then she can take melt the bombs and because these guys are going to be able to outflank, they could be right there on your enemy's line, I would give her the melt the bomb. If there was any one unit that I would always take the melt the bomb on, it would be a Dominion squad. Uh, the other would be Seraphims. So let's talk about their tactics. Uh, I usually think this is a good unit to take in a small squad. Um, I know some people would say, hey, if you take five more, you get two more extra special weapons, but then you're limited to being in a Rhino. Uh, I would take them, I would put them in an emulator, and I would suggest most times out flanking. That emulator is going to come in, you know, basically 50% of the time uh, it's coming in on the, the second round. It's three up. It's uh, actually better than 50% of the time um, it's coming in. The twin link multi multi on an emulator, if that's what you buy, it, it gets a little expensive, but it's pretty, pretty good. Um, the squad gets that active faith that makes them twin linked, so uh, they're pretty likely to hit with their Melta guns. And one of the tactics to think about if you take Melta or, or Flamer is you have these two that are armed with the special weapons. You have your sister superior, and, and I would say give her a plasma pistol. And, and a benefit to their active faith is if she rolls a 1 on her plasma pistol on um, her first shot, um, she gets a reroll because of the uh, active faith. and the re-roll is what counts, so you'd have to roll one and then one again for the weapon to get hot, otherwise the, the first roll doesn't count. So back to the tactics, let's say they had them both had multi guns, she shoots plasma, have one of these other girls, if you're close enough, throw a crack grenade, because it's a twin linked throw on the crack grenade and that's strength six, and then the last one shoots their bolter. Uh, so usually this, <laughs> Dominion squads usually are suicide units. Um, if you're lucky, one of them survives till the end of the game and you get line breaker with them, but uh, but they're great at showing up behind enemy lines and killing something. Um, or they're pretty good at showing up behind enemy lines later in the game if you're lucky and you're scoring line breaker, because they're always going to be at least a denial unit. Um, 
So what other tactics to use for them? Uh, you can put your warlord with them in some cases, depending on, you know, if you want them to die or not, but uh, uh, St. Celestine is a great addition to a uh, Dominion squad because if she comes in outflanking with them, um, she has a heavy flamer, and uh, that's strength 5, not like one of their flamers. She also throws crack grenades and almost never misses with her ballistic skill 7. Um, you could give that uh, same thing. You could put Uriah Jacobus. He, he's less of a hard-hitting uh, HQ, I'm not sure I'd want him to, to be downrange. Same thing with Arch Confessor Kiranov, I'm not sure I'd want him downrange. Um, so, you know, tactics. I usually bring these girls in from the side by outflank. Um, I have them armed with Meltas usually because I can end up behind one of my uh, opponent's vehicles or up against something like a Bastion and they can just blow it up. Uh, because they're twin linked, they can also take out flyers. Yeah, sure, they, they don't have Skyfire, but they're re-rolling their, uh, their rolls to hit, and, you know, with uh, two Meltas, a Plasma, and a Crack, if you're close enough to a Flyer, you, you can probably hit it with one of those, considering you're, you're re-rolling um, on your Active Faith, so, you know, you're, if you didn't get a 6, you re-roll, so there's a one-third chance that any of those hit, and, and even the Bolter at the right angle might take out a Flyer. Um, other things... If, if she has, the Sister Superior has a melt bomb then uh, once you outflank them, if the Sister Superior is still alive, it lets her take out, uh, you know, things like vehicles and bastions and maybe even uh, uh, monstrous creatures or walkers because she can be challenged. It's also pretty good to, uh, to think about that when you, uh, if you come in on your opponent's side without flank, you're likely close to a bunch of high-powered things like walkers that, that are we're thinking about heading down towards your deployment zone this squad is often going to be uh, going to be targeted by them but if you gave them meltas and plasma and uh, a melta bomb they can take out walkers uh, if they're lucky certainly they can uh, whittle a few hull points off things so you know in short this squad the dominions the dominions are probably a suicide squad in that uh, it, unless you take a large number of them, and, and even if you do take a large number of them, if you outflank them, they're going to end up in your opponent's deployment zone near a lot of opponent's models, and they'll probably die. But on the good side, um, within one or two rounds, a Dominion squad can score far more points than they were worth. Uh, you know, just thinking about it, if these girls come walking in off the back side of the board, they come in behind even a Land Raider. You walk up behind a Land Raider, or a Lehman Russ, or a Bastion, or any of those, and hit it with two Meltas, um, it, that, that could be the end, you know, if you blow up a Land Raider that's 200 and some points. Uh, the squad cost you uh, 90 points if you took the two Melta guns. So, uh, you know, you could trade a 90 to 100 and some point unit uh, for two or 300 points worth of enemies. Yeah, they're gonna die, but uh, but if you outflank them in, because you don't have to worry about the being unable to assault the round you outflank, you're not going to assault with these girls. Uh, you know, they're, they're pretty good. The other thing to think about is, if you're setting up the objectives at the beginning of the game and you know you have an outflanking unit, um, Putting objectives within reach of that outflanking unit uh, at the beginning of the game, you know, before you've picked sides, but as you're deploying them, is pretty useful. Sure, these girls only score in scourging, but um, if they can walk in on an objective, that means uh, later in the game they can contest an objective. Or, you know, if your opponent sees that there's a squad sitting on an objective somewhere, often they focus on them even if that squad isn't scoring. So, uh, so these girls have ability to distract or, you know, contest an objective because it only takes one of them to contest an objective late in the game. And if they come running in on your opponent or, or even your deployment zone and walk right up to an objective in the game, they, they contest it. And in scourging, they're going to be able to hold it. Um... So, you know, those are some tactics for them. I would say they're a definite, uh, definite take-it unit. I wouldn't spend 
uh, more than the minimum points to get the Meltas or Flamers and Plasma, and, and Meltabama wouldn't take the extra girls, I would say take two, because <laughs> you can get two units for the same cost as the extra girls, basically, and, um, and they're just more versatile because two units to come out flanking and possibly on opposite sides of the board, or, um, you know, they're not fearless, so when they get wounded, they are going to run. Uh, you know, there's lots of things to think about. You don't want them to run. They don't uh, line break at that point. They don't contest anything at that point. So, um, yep, Dominion Squad, I would take it.